do you think would be the most formidable Democrat that you as a Republican would say, hey, we got, we got our work cut out for us? No one. I, I think we could t we could body anybody right now. And when I say body, I mean like in a, in a sports setting. Like we, we, we could take them very easily. Probably the their best person, because the Democrats really don't have that deep of a bench. I would have to say Gavin Newsom. I mean, the guy's got a face made for TV. Uh, you know, he went against Ron DeSantis, one of our nation's best governor. And literally, the man put statistics behind his head saying, you are the worst in all these categories. And Gavin Newsom gave a response, which is a complete lie, saying, no, I'm not. But I mean, you know, he's very—he's he's got a silver tongue. He's gifted at what he does. But I don't think he'd be an issue for Donald Trump to beat. I mean, he—he's the only thing that he can stand on is California, which—and it's the most beautiful state in the union. But it is a shithole. What about North Carolina? Oh, North Carolina is fantastic. I mean, you once you get to the mountains, you love it over there. Once you get to the flatland, ah, not really my people. Yeah. <laughs> if I was a coach of a Democrat, I would probably pick one of the governors. So Newsom or Bashir or... Yeah, one of the governors, you know, if I was a coach. I can't see anybody, Michelle Obama, Newsom, I can't see anybody beating Donald Trump at this moment. Well, who do you think would be the toughest race for him, the toughest opponent if President Biden doesn't run? What's going to happen, Michelle Obama? Michelle, I've been saying this forever. This is going to happen. Biden doesn't have COVID. They pulled the plug. Plug's been pulled. Uh, I think the... Debate was the ending. They took money away. They let it, they let him take his funding, um, and they, they knew this was going to happen. So I think Gavin Newsom is their next guy in 2028, maybe versus like a JD Vance or a Vivek. Um, but I think now he might be a VP. I don't think um, I don't know if they're going to be able to keep two women over there. You know, what I'm saying it's going to be tough. I'm giving each of you hundred dollars to to bet. No, I'm not really going to do it. I'm a reporter. We don't make that kind of money. Uh, but 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 I'm going to give you each hundred dollars. You have to bet on one Democrat who you think is best suited to beat Donald Trump out there right now. And I'm assuming it's not uh, Joe Budd. Well, most of those folks are no longer Democrats. They're now independents. So name one. hundred bucks. <laughs> well, Tulsi, 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 I can't pronounce her first name, Tulsi Gabbard, G Gabbard, I, I'm probably not pronouncing her, or John Kennedy. And uh, and not only are they, you know, they're, they've been tossed aside by their own, what it was, their own party. Who, as a delegate to this convention, who's the one that scares you the most? I mean, if, there's got to be one that you think has a better chance, one that you'd like to see run least against your, your guy. Well, the person who would probably have the best chance would be Tulsi Gabbard, and she's not a Democrat anymore. Congressman Michael Shore of the Young Turks, just a, a quick question for you. Of all the Democrats that could run, assuming President Biden stands down, is there one that you think gives the, 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 the toughest race, gives your party the toughest race? I'm not really an expert in Democrat politics. That's more what you guys do at the Young Turks. I'm just not, I, I, you know, I'm focused on our convention. Right. I, I know, but I'm a Rangers fan. I know that I don't want to play the Flyers. So it's just, I'm trying to figure out, like, who, who the Republicans hold in higher esteem as far as just being strategic and an opponent. When you're the 29 Yankees, you don't care who you play. I'm not that old. Come on. <laughs> Again, <laughs> sorry if I offended you. They don't even know who their nominee is tens of days from their convention. Right. And you're seeing unprecedented unity here for President Trump. Indeed, I think, yeah. I think that's what's important. Look, I just don't know what Democrat we're going to be facing. Right. Okay. I, I don't know. I don't really care. Okay. This coalition is a durable coalition against any Democrat that they could conceivably run. If you had to bet, right, if somebody said, you know, you've got to make a $100 bet on one Democrat who could beat Trump anywhere in the country, who would it be? That would be a bad bet, and I want to, wouldn't want to lose my money. <laughs> no, not doing it. Trump's good. Trump's going to win. I wouldn't. I don't even want to talk about the Democrats. Right, but there there is a presidential race. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and we're going to have fun winning it. I would be going with Michelle Obama 100%. Um, I think that has been. I think that was the plan. Honestly, I think that was the plan for about a year now. Um, and that because you know she's Obama's wife, Brock's wife. Um, everyone loved a Brock. Not a lot of Republicans personally, but most Democrats love Barack Obama. When you think about Michelle Obama, you think of like the schools, health care, Medicaid, and I think most Democrats are easily sold by that concept. And, um, you know, she's another woman. She'd be the first woman president. I think that would go a long way for the Democrats. I hope they don't put her up there. I think it would be much better if they put someone like Newsom for the Republican Party. So. Is there a Democrat that gives you pause? Is there one that you think would be better in this race against your candidate? 
Yeah, I mean, be honest with you speaking. Yeah, I would say that, you know, Michelle Obama is probably the toughest thing we would have. Other than that, I believe that their party, the loyalists, the, the, the Biden family is going to be sitting home if that happens. And they can't afford to lose any votes right now. And I think the Republican Party is definitely going to be successful in November, no matter who they put on the ticket. Of all the Democrats uh, that could possibly be on that ticket, who's the one that you think will give Donald Trump his toughest race? Uh, it's. It, I mean, I think probably Gavin Newsom is the is the, is the slickest, uh, but he's got a, a lot of problems in, in in California. But it's all marketing, you know. They're, they're these people, they they get a, a good slow, and it's and it's sort of a race to the bottom too with the negativity. But I think Trump, everyone said anything they and, and everything they can about Trump. So it's, I'm not sure if that strategy is going to work. Say somebody gives you a hundred dollars and says you have to bet on one Democrat who could beat Donald Trump. What Democrat would you bet that on? Nobody. Well, you had to. That was part of the game. No, We're playing a game. No, because our government is not a game. So there is no bet because there is no Democrat out there who is a true Democrat can beat Trump. Are there some candidates that uh, have you a little scared, a little more nervous than others? No, I, I think that's an empty pocket over there. <laughs> I don't know. There's no one who's been developed or uh, brought along. And, you know, Newsom, uh, California's wrecked. They're all moving to Texas. I mean, there's 1,200 people moving to Texas every day, most of them from California. Let's say somebody came up to you and gave you $100 to bet on one Democrat who would do the best against Donald Trump. Who do you think that might be? You? No, <laughs> I don't think there is anybody that could... But one of them would do better than all the others, presumably. Like, who is the one that would say, hmm, you know, I still think Trump's going to win, but this one could be a tougher race? I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. We've been working too hard for Mr. Trump to, President Trump, to even think about that. Who is the one person who will give Donald Trump a bigger run for their money uh, of all the Democrats? The guy behind uh, Hillary and the guy behind Biden. Obama. Do you think Obama is controlling anything? I really think so. The only first president to spend all his time in D.C. after he finished, instead of going and fishing in the creek at home, you know, uh, to me, uh, that's what I see. He is the ultimate, he'll give a good run, he's a good talker, but his morals are suspect. His character is flawed. In what way? In a way that, you know, everything that's, that we see happening now you know, move, moving people around, uh, the Justice Department uh, doing all this, it all comes from his watch. Here's what I think. I mean, he hasn't been president now no, uh, for, 20, for seven years. But he's, when he was there, a lot of the middle management in, uh, in, in, in the federal government was moved out, permanent employees, people of like mind were put in place. Even under Trump's last term, I see, and I, and I see this in, in Noah. I see this in, in the agencies we deal with in, in the islands. Those guys that are making policy and the new guys come in, they're just saying, oh, this is the way it has to be. This is the way it has to be. But it doesn't. But it's the mindset from Obama's time that's uh, very predominant in decision making. And I think that's why President Trump had a hard time in the last go around is because of that.